Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Joy of Puzzles. I have for you today a Thomas Kincaid painting titled Sunday Morning Chapel. This puzzle was published in 2020 by the CEACO company. CEACO is located in Massachusetts and they were formed in 1987. The website doesn't give any other details about the company, nor could I find any other sources of information. So that's all I got for you on these folks. Uh, the artist is listed as Thomas Kincaid Studio. Uh, now Thomas Kincaid himself was known as the painter of light. He was a very prolific artist with a huge collection, a uh, great website. Uh, they have all sorts of brands, you know, under their name, including Disney, so uh, lots to meet your your choices of personal art here. This particular painting was created in 2020, and since Thomas passed in 2012, it's clearly not created by him, uh, but it is under the Thomas Kincaid Studio brand, and, you know, really looks exactly like art he would have created. It is based on another one of his paintings. Uh, I believe it was called the... Um, something to do with sleigh rides, whatever. It was a winter scene, and they basically made it a non-winter scene. This puzzle is a thousand pieces and took me eight hours to build. Um... So let's talk about the strategy on how I built this. I, I started with the roof of the chapel. It is a particular green shade, and along with the little windows and such. And that led me to build the other homes in the background of the image. From there, I found that the pink, lavender foliage and plant life was next. And then I did something very uncharacteristic. I built the sky. Now normally, when I'm building a puzzle that's a photograph or a painting, the sky is one of the last things you go after because it tends to be blue and white, right? Not much going on there, and maybe some clouds you gotta work around. It, it's that last little slog of getting this stuff done. Well, not true in this case. In this case, there is just a small piece of sky across the top quarter of the puzzle. It's actually less than that. Um, and it has some very vibrant colors in it. So there's the transition between the sky and the mountain and the trees, and then toss in the vibrant colors. And like I said, oddly, I completed the sky very early in the puzzle. I arguably did it before I finished the, uh, the lavender foliage. I then went after all the other plant life that's out there, anything that wasn't green. The path that occupies the lower left hand of the puzzle was pretty easy to build, and, and it kind of wraps around the tree. And then the river had the next set of vibrant colors. And, and on the, along the way, you start filling in green, right? You start noticing that some of the green pieces are based on the brush strokes have a completely different look to them compared to the other bits of foliage in the back here. I will say <laughs> the trees in the back here remind me a little bit of the Joy of Painting and some happy trees. I can't help but make that comparison as this is Joy of Puzzles, uh, but it has that very distinct feel for, to it. I feel like if I were to watch this be painted, I can't help but <laughs> imagine Bob Ross making these comments about happy trees and watching his, his style and how he created these. Perhaps that's why I'm so drawn to the Thomas Kincaid line. Alright, strategy. What's enough of that? Um, let's, let's review the puzzle. I'm going to review the puzzle in four distinct categories on a scale of one to five. I've had great luck with the this brand name and these puzzles in particular as far as the quality goes, so let's start with the puzzle material quality. I find these folks to be above average. This is one of their modern puzzles. I reviewed one last week, an older one made from recycled material. This one is more in line with what I normally get from CEACO. It's going to be a four for the puzzle material quality. Thin, crisp pieces. Laminated is 
grate the image to the paperboard itself. So, always fun to build one of these. The next category is the puzzle, cut quality, and piece design. Also above average in the respect of the cut quality. I'm going to give this a 4. The pieces fit together great. Almost never did I put a piece in the wrong spot based on the way it fit. So, it, the design is more the traditional style pieces, but that's fine uh, because the cut quality is so good and the there is still a level of uniqueness in each piece that it doesn't just they can't put them really in the wrong spot. Next category, difficulty. I consider eight hours a normal build time, so this was eight hours and I don't know five minutes or something. So this is a three. This is an average difficulty, and probably that sky bit being so small is what kept this in that category. I often that last little bit of sky takes a great deal of time and adds another hour to the project. Not in this case, so this one's a three. This one's a good one for the folks out there that are you know, looking for a beautiful image, straightforward build, good quality. I don't normally say something like this, but uh, this would be one that I would buy for someone, and if someone were to ask me, hey, I'm looking for a puzzle for someone, I would point them in this direction. This was very satisfying. All right, the fourth and most subjective of all the categories, frameability. I was the type of person who built a puzzle only once, kept it forever, sealed it, hung it on the wall. Would this make the list? And, well, this is a four. This is above average. This is uh, gallery-worthy artwork. Um, yeah, so, again, purely subjective, right? Not, do I have a place in my house for this type of artwork? No, but I do appreciate it if there was a, you know, um, a show of these at a local art museum. I would definitely make an effort to go see the Thomas Kincaid collection, and this would be on that list of great puzzles, or great images, I should say, to go look at. Overall, well, I think I've already given away what I would say to this one. This is a four. This is above average overall. This is definitely a puzzle I will note to myself to build again in a couple years or loan it out to family and friends. It just hits all the right notes between the material, the cut, the difficulty is right where it should be. Uh, this is definitely a four overall for me. What else can I say about this puzzle? I, I will say that I do look forward every time I crack open one of these boxes with the brand name and the image type. These to me are nostalgic in the respect of, it reminds me of the Big Ben puzzles and the Milton Bradley puzzles from back in the 70s and 80s, you know, before it was... <laughs> when puzzles were simple, right? <laughs> Showing my age terribly here, oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this one, and I, it makes me want to go buy more of these. If it was someplace I could get to, I'd love to go to the store here and go go check out what these have, along with the folks up at White Mountain, right? Though I think my wife would be very upset that if I said I was to uh, schedule a vacation around where I could go buy puzzles. So, yeah. Anyways, um, thanks everyone out there who takes some time to watch one of these videos. I know it's... 10 minutes out of a day, go ahead and click the like button, maybe even subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to bringing you more puzzles in the very near future. Uh, I am working on a new series, so I'll have uh, new stuff to talk about and to show everyone. Thanks again, everyone. Bye.